Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, I'm on my way up to uh, up to Dens, we've got a meeting with former British champion Josh Whale and his dad Mick, so should be interesting and then I think I think me and Ron Lyle are then going to go out and, uh, and just have a few a few shandies. We only drink shandy nowadays, we're knocking on, aren't we? I mean, I'm 50 year old next year, me. Not bad for 50 though, eh? Shout out to all you positive people who keep leaving positive comments. I do apologise for five videos going out in one day. Not my fault when my partners are going to spa days. <laughs> now, it's been an interesting week in boxing, hasn't it? Really, very interesting week. We've had Cool Hand Luke fighting on a matchroom show against Lomachenko getting beat, Yui Fury got beat, Charlie Edwards got bashed up but they managed to wriggle him out of it but the uh, <coughs> the Boatsy one well it's funny how they had this instant replay thing for the WBC, but the WBA one wasn't there for the uh, Boatsy one, was it? So Eddie Hearn made full use of the rules. That's not like Eddie Hearn, that is it. I'm going to come on to uh, the Luke Campbell story at the end of the video because... a slot of Luke Campbell one in at the end because I think that needs a little bit more detail but what I want to talk about at the moment is the Saudi Arabia the Saudi Arabia mess so that's what it is isn't it it's a mess in it we've got we've got a British fighter who's supposed to be iconic fighting in Saudi Arabia where they behead people and they throw gay men off of buildings apparently don't they you can't drink alcohol they do all sorts of things that results in going into villages and torturing people but they're paying the most money and Eddie Hearn's trying to dress it up good old Eddie Hearn with friends like him, who needs enemies? Eh? Now, as far as I'm concerned, Andy Ruiz is over £300. He's done a Buster Douglas by the looks of it, hasn't he? He's done a Buster Douglas on the job, hasn't he? That's how it looks to me. Now, I don't know what to make of it all, it all looks a bit... It all... It all reeks of desperation. There's a world out there and we've got to try other things. No. Don't you mean you have to line your pockets because Anthony Joshua could be having his last fight, he's worth well over 110 million after this fight. Why does he need to be getting knocked about again because if Ruiz comes in confident because of what he did last time and Joshua's not so confident, it'll be another it'll be another battering, won't it, for Joshua? That will be him done then. Forget all this world tour. We had all this world tour with Chris Eubank Senior, didn't we? Wales, Scotland and Africa. World tour. Do me a favour, as Frank Warren would say. Listen. 
if Joshua gets a good hiding, his body language is telling me that he's gonna go, right? He'll bail out, he don't need all this. He turns 30 in October. He won't wanna to be hanging about with all them millions. The heck, he'll be gone. There's always, he'll always find work. He'll always find work. But what a week in boxing it's been. What a strange, strange week in boxing. Uh, very, 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 very strange. You've got that Egyptian thing. There was no atmosphere there. Or, well, not Egyptian, Saudi thing. It looks like Egypt though, doesn't it? It's all sandy, isn't it? But I never did do geography at school. But it all looks to me like a smash and grab. Joshua bails out, Eddie Hearn gets the biggest pay packet that he can. He milks it. And the the the, the desperado-ness of it is this, right? Let me tell you. They had an ironclad contract with They had an ironclad contract with Anthony Ruiz. Anthony uh, Ruiz, whatever it's and Andy Ruiz. They had an ironclad contract. I've got a short-term memory loss, mate. Jeez. They had an ironclad contract, let me tell you this mate. And they folded and gave him more money, what's that tell you? It tells you they were desperate. Desperate men. Acting desperate. Now we all know what Matchroom did after Steve Collins beat Chris Eubank in rematch. We all know what happened, don't we? If you don't know, Google Steve Collins versus Matchroom court reports. Go and have a look about have a read about what was going on behind the scenes. That's how you manipulate the rules. Good old Barry Earn, aka Baz in Baz. Old whiskey nose. Hey? Eh? 48 cans of Stella a day. And a pasty. Let me tell you this, right? They bailed out of boxing. Bailed out. They dipped in and dipped out after that. Bailed out. They left it to everybody else. Frank Warren. And up and coming promoters at the time, Denny Sobson, Frank Maloney, then Mick Hennessy burst onto the scene, didn't he, with class of 2002. So you doing here with indicator. We all know what happened, don't we? They bailed out. They never got a look in then till Eduardo appeared with his air plugs and his wide awake suits. Let me tell you. are eggs. Sure as eggs are eggs. They're gonna bail out if Joshua retires. Why would they want to hang around in boxing? Why? Why would anyone hang around in boxing to get knocked from pillar to post? Take Joshua out that lot. Who's he got? He's got Dylan White on a drug test. And is Dylan White saving a drug ban? Is he saving a drug ban? Well, people are starting to ask questions. Has he already started his ban? Because if he has, let me tell you this, if he started his drug ban, he's already nearly three months into it, isn't he? It's all a mess, isn't it? We've got this Saudi job. Saudi? Whatever happened to... We want it in the UK! Fuck fans, Eddie. Fuck fans. Hey? Hey? Let me tell you this, when you get to end of this video, let me tell you, you're going to be pressing that like button and leaving loads of nice comments because I started to think about my work a bit more now. I'm moving to Dennis's office tomorrow full time, instead of bit by bit. Full time, 9 to 5 and Monday to Friday. It only took me April 2015. It's only took me four year, five months. But, if it were that easy, everybody would be doing it, wouldn't they? Multi-millionaires have to be careful about people around them, don't you, don't they? You've got to earn it, haven't you? You've got to earn it. Uh, I've brought uh, a few little people on board with me. Terry, Rico, Nicola, and slowly but surely, we're all making our little way. 
in the boxing industry, Porky's little consortium. Now, it's an hard, hard slog, very, very hard to build. You know, look we'll, what we'll, we're working with, but slowly but surely we're going to get there, and I'd like to think that I've learned a lot last few years, but it's an hard game. But getting back to uh, getting back to that, well, when you get to when when I get to end of this video, I'm going to put because I'm only allowed to do one video a day now because there's been a few team meetings or a few team screaming matches, and it's going to be one video a day, quality of a quantity. Instead of me just throwing them out, there's going to be a little bit more thought put into them because I've got. I keep getting stuff fired at me and it's all muddling my head up, so I've taken a step back and writing a few things down and trying to do it properly so that we can put good stuff out or I can put good stuff out and Nicola can jazz them up with thumbnails and uploads and <clears throat> but I'm not happy with a lot of things in boxing at the moment. I am not happy. When I explain, I'm just going to break down. I'm going to break everything down, and it's all leading to bad matchmaking by matchroom. Very bad, very dangerous. You'll see when you get to end this video. I'm not happy. I'm not an happy pig. They're going to bail out them. I'm telling you, they're bailing. It's all very, it's all very well tapping up other fighters from other stables all nice and cushioning it when you've got these youtubers that are, that are following you following you around the world we know who these youtubers are don't we these american people i'm not saying the male we've got these uh, english youtubers as well they're going all over the world following these certain promoters about and what are they doing they're getting this they're getting busy, aren't they, in other people's business? They're having little words in other fighters' ear holes. That's what's going on. And I don't like that. I don't like any kind of ear holes. Look, that's why I got the top of mine bit off by my cousin. Or half cousin, should I say. But I still love him. Oh, he, he's a lovable rogue, who did my tab, isn't he? You can't. You can't not but love him. <laughs> Hope he's all right. But uh, but yeah, it's not good. It's not good, and I'm not happy. I'm not an happy piglet. I'm not happy with Eddie Hearn at the moment. I'm not happy. Saudi Arabia, and then we get onto his uh, onto the main course. KSI versus Logan Paul rematch. Oh my God! What is going on? I'll have an heart attack. I'm getting angry. What is going on? What's going on here? Logan Paul against KSI. KSI against Logan Paul. What is happening to the Queen Queensby rules? What is going on? It's becoming a circus. Oh my God. I'll have to concentrate on driving. I might crash. It's becoming a circus. Let me get quarter three or is it 10 to two? It's becoming a circus, and do you know why? Eddie Hearn said they can't fight, it's a load of crap. Well, let me tell you this. What Eddie Hearn's forgetting to tell people is this. He wanted to put the first fight on, but you can't, can you? You can't put a white collar event on if you've got a promoter's license. The only way around it is to get him to go pro. Now who's given these guys a pro license? And not only has Eddie Hearn given him a pro license, he's now pulled his dick out and took a piss on every boxer that's coming through ranks and turning pro, who's gone through amateur circuit, who's going through all novice fights and learning the craft. He's just took his dick out and took a piss all over you people. And what are you doing about it? Nobody dares say a word! Do you know why? Because they all want to work with him down the line! Cowards! Cowards! Off with their heads! Nobody 
Nobody wants to say a word, do they? Nobody dares say a word. Nobody dares say a word. Hey, what's going on? It's like Anthony Crawler when he got clumped on head with a paving slab. They were all running round giving him PR. But when Kel Brook got stabbed, nobody said a dicky bird. Why? Because it was a cover up. That's why. It's a cover up. I'm raging. I'm not really raging, I'm fuming. Now I'm telling you now, KSI against Logan Paul 2 is a slap in face not only to boxers turning pro, to world champions like Callum Smith, Josh Taylor. I don't see anybody coming out and saying no, and McGuigan's going to say anything. I love the McGuigans, I'm a massive McGuigan fan. They're not saying a dicky bird. They're not saying a dicky bird. Is Tyson Fury coming out and saying anything? No. But this time last year he'd have said something, money. But why ain't he saying anything now? Think about it. Think about it. You don't bite the hand that feeds you, do you? Think about it. Could he be going to match room? Has Anthony Yard come out and said anything about it? Think about it. Has Tunde said anything about it? Think about it. Has Daniel Dubois said anything about it? Think about it. Nobody's saying a word. Has Billy Joe said out about it? Oh, he can't do his wee head here, isn't it? He? He's only going to be on undercard, undefeated 28 and 0 Olympian. British Commonwealth European and a world champion in two weights. He's on undercard. Oh my God. See him there, should we hunt him down? A bit Mustang. Should we hunt him down, what do you reckon? We don't need to be doing stuff like that, do we? Can't be speeding. I'm half an hour early anyway, so I might be able to crack on with the rest of this now. I am raging. Look at him here. Go on then, love. Bloody hell. Nobody's saying a word, are they? Because they want to work with them. Nobody's saying anything. Oh yeah, you've got people that are saying it to me. They're all giving me bullets to fire, aren't they? With my little pea shooter. They're all going to give me bullets to fire because what have I got to lose? I'm alright, aren't I? I've got a few quid. I'm happy in life. Sometimes you just gotta get yourself a little nest egg, do something you enjoy and be happy. We all porridge have them, why do I need to be risking it? Chasing loads more money. You get yourself an egg and do something that you love, because life's too short. So I'm gonna keep digging them out. But I, I've got a soft spot for Frank Smith. I've, and, I've, and you know what, there's times where I do like Eddie Hearn. He's a lovable lo rogue, he's a lovable lummox. But he is taking the piss. He's taking the piss out of fans. In fact, he's not taking the piss, he's took a piss. He's pissing on people like John Ryder. Who's that other guy he's got there who I'm a big fan of? Martin J. Ward. He's already took a piss on O'Hara Davis. He already backstabbed him. He's taking a piss on everybody in boxing. And nobody's doing anything about it, except me. I'm the only one that's gonna take him on. I even get bollocked up here. So what? You've got to be your own fucking man. I'm not going to get paid for the video and I've sworn, but so what? I'm going to get 80 pence anyway. Who gives a crap about it anyway? What's right is right, man. I don't agree with what's going on. How can they come into the sport? The first, right. The first fighters pros. The headlining on a pay-per-view. What is going on? Sky are going to put that on pay-per-view. Where's Mr. Bean? Come and answer these questions, Mr. Bean. Where's Coogan and Rob Tebbett and Michelle Phelps, the three musketeers? What? Are they going to say anything? Are they going to stick it to them? Are they going to stick it to them? Or are we all going to see what they really are? Fair enough. They're doing well. They've got loads of followers and they've got the, it's their living. I'm not going to stop anybody earning a living, let me tell you this. But do your jobs correctly. If you love boxing, you'll get them into a corner and you'll say, Eddie, what are you doing here? You're taking liberties. 
but they'll find a way around it how they ask questions it's pure greed it's greed on a massive massive scale it makes Saudi look awful look how greedy they are the greed of it it's like when Eddie said no Porky you don't have to give me no money for them tickets you can come as my guest at Grove's Frotch fight I says, no, I just want two tickets, 200 quid, it's 200 quid. No, you don't have to, I says, no, Eddie, I insist. Oh, right, then gives it here. There you go, Eddie loves a pound, no, and I don't take freebies. Yeah, I took two tickets off him for the Kel Brook fight against Senchenko. Two ringside ones. Somebody put a YouTube channel out saying that I begged him for tickets. No, I could have had more free tickets than that. I've had one set of tickets off Eddie Earn, one. And they had the Groves ones, which I give him 200 quid for Groves Frotch Manchester, but the tickets he gave me were like, fantastic. They were a couple of grand's worth, so he's a nice guy, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I did a few favours for Eddie at the time leading up to that, but I don't agree with this. And I'll email him and tell him, but I don't agree with what's going on. Oh, well, what do you know, Dennis is not here. Unbelievable. I might as well park in Michelle's spot, she's in Italy. I'm chatting Michelle up today. She's gone over there for some Italian uh, salami. She likes salami, don't you, Michelle? Especially if it's on pizza. But I am not happy at all with what's going on. How many minutes we're on here? 20, 21. I'm not happy. It's it's now becoming farcical. It's becoming farcical. Now, what I've done here, I've wrote something out. I've wrote it out in my own words here so that I'm not having to ad lib all the time because sometimes when I'm driving, I make mistakes and I just want it to be I want it to be right. So yeah. You see, a lot of people when they're behind the camera, they'll read off, they'll read things that they've wrote out. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you straight, I'm going to read this to you, what I've wrote out. See what you think. This could be a new concept here. Can't show you that because that's my new phone number. I've got a new number now. Keep getting funny calls. And massive phone bills. People setting me up. Right, I'm going to read this out to you now in my Oakley driving glasses, which are not really good for reading, for driving. Right, let's have a look, 22 minutes, so we'll put that on again. Right, here we go. Right, listen to this. We've got volume. Yeah. Well, what a week in boxing we have. I just had Lomachenko bashing up Cool Hand Luke, which, which is Luke Campbell, who's now 32 in a couple of days, 32 year old, and looking at his CV, he's all he's won is a Commonwealth title. Now, what I mean by that is Luke Campbell. I don't, I don't count WBC international belts. We've got a kid fighting for a WBC international silver in two weeks. I don't count them. Dennis knows my opinion on them. That's where we get at it. I don't I don't agree with him. I don't agree with one that we might be doing for Josh Whale. I'm a traditional guy, but if you can't get the traditional belts, you have to go that way to get rankings. I understand that, but I'm not a fan of them. Right. Now, Luke Campbell, he's got a Commonwealth title. That's it. Has he got a British title? I don't think he has, has he? Right, that's it. He's no English title, so he's got no area, no English, no British. He's got a Commonwealth, though, on his CV. He's got no European title, right. He lost to a shop worn Ivan Mendy, right, a Frenchman, on a matchroom show in London. And rather than rematch him, within, you know, within a few months or within a year or so, within a reasonable time limit, he fought Gary the Hitman Sykes. A career super featherweight with six stoppages out of 33 fights. Hang on, two. Dennis will be here at two o'clock. What time? Two o'clock. Time have you? Uh, half what? Twenty-five to two. Oh, right. All right. 
Window cleaner, that's all. I'm trying to get paid. How much do you owe? It's 18. 18 quid? Yeah. Here, I'll get you. I did them tools, Dad. You went in. 18 quid, is that what you charge? How much is that for, Mum? Hang on. What are you doing then? A bit of photography right? No, I'm just filming now. You're alright. I'll, I'll, I'll edit it out. <laughs> well, I'll leave, it. I'll leave it in for authenticity, eh? <laughs> but I get a receipt. That's you know what Dennis is like. <laughs> I'll put it in the dash. Yeah, I'll put it in the dash. I'll just put this note in to Seth. Oh, you're alright. I Michelle's think... in Italy, you see. Sorry? She's in Italy. She's gone on holiday. Alright, yeah. Why so... don't you talk to her to go up? So, what, what do I give him then? I'll just say you've paid. Now, yeah. Oh, yeah, alright then, yeah. Fit that and all that in it. I don't like to get involved in money situations and that, but sometimes a man's got to do what a man's got to do, hasn't he? Uh, so basically, uh, I've brought my concentration that a lot. He's he's had six stoppages in 33 fights, uh, 33 bouts. Oh, thank you very much, you gentleman. Take care. Uh, he's had six stoppages. It, oh, he's up. Remind you, you oh yeah, okay. Right. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right, sorry about that. He's had six stoppages, Gary uh, Sykes, in thirty-three bows. After him, Eduardo wheeled out Dirty Derek Matthews. Uh, he was one of them in, in Luke's comeback. Now, he's gone Derry Matthews after Gary Sykes. Now, Derry Matthews, <laughs> for, for, cool, for Cool and Luke. He wheeled out Derry Matthews, right? That's on a plate, isn't it, for Luke uh, Campbell, Derry Matthews, at that stage at game. Uh, he proper served Dirty Derry up. To, to, to cool and Luke and let me tell you this the only thing missing was Derry getting out a wheelchair at the weigh-in that fight was Sykes last fight so Gary Gary the hitman Sykes right the hitman right with six stoppages at 33 fights that's a gift wrap for Luke innit who's basically just fighting Gary Sykes for Commonwealth vacant so basically, Gary Sykes is an easy one for Luke, innit? He's treading water with him, innit? Till they can get him to Linares. Now, that fight was Sykes' last fight. The old cool and, uh, old cool and Luke then fought million dollar crawlers leftovers in Darley's Perez before Eddie served him up to Linares on a Golden Boy show in California, which is true. Now, so basically, Cool and Luke jumped from winning a vacant, yes, a vacant Commonwealth. Tommy Frank, our lad, has got a vacant Commonwealth. Uh, has got a Commonwealth title. He won a vacant Commonwealth title versus a shot to bits, feather duster man. John Fury calls people who can't punch feather duster man. You know, like Paulie Malignaggi and Sven Ocker. Feather duster man. <laughs> Now, Gary the Hitman Sykes, as I've said, six stoppages in 33 bouts, and he retired after losing to Cool and Luke. Retired, man. So how easy was that one? How easy was that for Luke Campbell? A vacant Commonwealth shot against Gary Sykes. Come on. Cool and Luke up next, Derry, who after Cool and Luke dispatched him, lasted seven minutes with O'Hara Davis, where it's seven or eight minutes, and then he retired. And oh, and by the way, Derry had 52 fights, winning 38. So he won 38 out of 52. But Cool and Luke, and let me tell you, Derry in his peak had beat Luke Campbell, I think, and knocked him out. But Cool and Luke was fight 51. So Gary Sykes is in his last fight. He fights Luke Campbell. He retires. Derry Matthews, he fights Luke Campbell. He has seven more minutes against O'Hara Davis. Three, he's got stopped in third. And he retires. So 
Luke Campbell's had two easy ones there, hasn't he? This is his record. So all he's got on his record out of the levels is a, is a Commonwealth. We go through the six levels, don't we? Area, English, British, Commonwealth, European and World. And then there's Elite, level seven. Right. So, do we see a pattern? My fellow hardcores, do we see a pattern here? Of course we see a pattern, don't we? This is me just breaking it down, like Terry Chapman Diamond does and Rico. I'm just breaking it down and just reading into it. Instead of just ranting, I've put a bit more thought into it because this is what I have to do when I go in meetings here. But whereas when I'm in car or when I'm at home or in my office and that, I just rage, don't I? But sometimes you just got to put a bit more effort in, haven't you? Because there's people coming to the table now with channeling. You know, I, 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 like, I think I do know a little bit about boxing, but it's no good ranting, is it? Now, do we see a pattern here? Now, I see a pattern. Now... Gary Sykes is a non-puncher. It's a vacant Commonwealth, as I've just said. His last fight, then Dirty Derry. We'd had two more three, two or three rounds. We are a man. Come on, it's classic Eddie Hearn. Area English Commonwealth European World, and then you've got Elite. He skips English and wins a vacant Commonwealth. Skips British and European and gets fed to Linares. Now I said fed to Linares, but he did put up a good show against Linares. So I were wrong. He, he got beat, but he put up a good fight against Linares. But he weren't ready, was he? He lost the fight. And then lo and behold, he rematches Mendy and wins. Now, if Luke Campbell would have rematched Mendy before he fought Linares, I think he'd have beat Linares because he only lost to Linares on a split. Now, he would have overcome the mental block against Mendy. And plus, he'd have learnt to pace his son a bit better, wouldn't he? Now... If you have rematched Mendy prior to, to Lenar, as I've just said, it would have made the difference as, as he lost a split, didn't he? So what I mean about Kamikaze matchmaking is we've got the fact that he got out the six levels. He, he got out the six levels to world. What he did, he just won a Commonwealth. I, I, I'm like Jamie McDonald, Clinton Woods, Billy Joe Saunders, Nathan Cleverly. Go through the levels. And if you stumble, like Clinton Woods stumbled at world level, they went back, didn't they, and they regrouped. Dennis Fruit Towling in the Roy Jones fight. Dennis Hobson saved his man for another day. They regrouped. And that's what you've got to do. Regroup. Now Luke Campbell's not gone through the levels, he's now in no man's land now with three defeats and mileage on clock. Now, he goes in with a guy who, he, 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 what does he do then? After he loses to Linares, well, before long he's in, with, he's in with Lomachenko. Lomachenko! Lomachenko, he's not world level is he? He's like your Floyd Mayweather level isn't he? Your Andre Ward level, your, your Pete Kovalev, you know, he's at elite level, isn't he? You can't mess with these guys at that level, you can't do it. Not when you've only got a Commonwealth in bank. It's like giving somebody keys to a Ferrari and saying, race that guy there in that Lamborghini, it should be a good race. You're going to bin it on first bend, aren't you? Or, or you're going to go steady just to get through a race, but you're not going to win, are you? But you're going to complete the race, but you're going to be way back, aren't you? I didn't give Luke Campbell a clear round. Not one clear round. He had a go in one round, but... I didn't have him winning that round, but... Come on. Now... See what I mean about kamikaze matchmaking? Oh. Alright, mate. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll finish this off in a bit. So, sorry about that interruption there, uh, it was Josh and Mick Whale knocking on window. Uh, we've got that business out of the way now with Dennis. Uh, sort of window cleaning man, back to video. Uh, and I've lost my muffler thing off my microphone, I don't know where that's gone. Anyway, so as I was pointing out there, the six levels, he's bypassed it, hasn't he? Luke Campbell, he's only, he's only ended up with like... Uh, Area English common. He's ended up with a level three Commonwealth, which is probably just below British in it or round about that. 
He's missed British and European out and world and gone straight in. Well, he's failed at world before. He's gone straight in with Lomachenko, who, who beat, basically beat Lenares up, stopped him. He's done crawler. Lenares had done crawler twice, so do we see a pattern here? Yeah, we do see a pattern, don't we? Well, I, I tend to see it, but like I said earlier, nobody dare say, nobody dare say a word, dare they? Nobody dare say a word. Um, you know, he, he, he's in with a guy who's elite level. Lomachenko's elite level. People are saying he put a great fight up in that look. He was just happy to get the 12 rounds done, wasn't he? Of course Lomachenko's going to say he's hard his fight. How many rounds did he lose against? Do you want an hard fight for him? Plus he's a smaller guy, Lomachenko. He's basically a super feather, isn't he? Feather. But, no, he, he, looked, he looked easy to me. You know, it, like I said, he bashed up Crawler. It's just, it's just one thing to another, isn't it? it it's crazy matchmaking. Look. Crawler only got really in, in them fights with Linares. He got two with Linares. He shouldn't have even had one. He got two with Linares. Got one with Lomachenko. I know he were mandatory for that, and I know. Look, we know what it were, don't we? It's manipulating the system, innit? This is what goes on, innit? The Linares is levels above Crawler and Lomachenko's levels above them all. Yeah, you've got to challenge yourself and I don't want to be an hater, but I don't want to see people coming out with all this madness that it was a competitive fight. Do me a favour. Yeah, we thought we were going to get iced, but he went 12 rounds, but come on, we know what we saw, don't we? I know what I saw. You know what I mean? No, it is what it is, isn't it? But fighters, like I said, they're not superheroes, are they? Fighters are not superheroes. We have weight divisions for a reason. Like I said, there's six levels, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? You know, Loma's level seven, isn't it? Crawler is Euro level, isn't it? Who fluked a world title, in my opinion. How many world champions has Crawler beaten? Who'd beat a world champion? I'm not talking about gifts. Do you know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's... Let's let's talk real. Let's talk real here. Like I said earlier, Crawler got promoted because he tried to stop a burglary. It was a great story. They said he'd never fight again and all that. He won a world title. It's just for hype. You know they were pushing and pushing it, weren't they? They never mentioned Kel Brook thing though, did they? Do you know what I mean? You've got. Tesco Joe, we're pushing him out there, and that he's a good manager. Tesco Joe, he gets them the chances, doesn't he? Because he's got a corner plot in Manchester. He's had all them fighters, had a generation of them. He's had all Smith brothers, Marcus Morrison, Macklin, all the rest of them. Well, it is what it is, isn't it? Mr. Bean, Baked Bean, Runner Bean, Could have been, Should have been, Never been. Johnny Nelson, all them, they're all pushing for collar, aren't they? But none of them would speak about Kel Brook getting stabbed, would they? That were all. Do you know what I mean? That were all quiet, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? That's how I look at it, and I think there's an agenda, and you know, people don't say anything about always getting chances and who shouldn't. Look at Callum Smith. He's not getting chances, is he? Why? Because he's not funny on Twitter. The kid's ring magazine champion. He can fight for fun. He's making weight, isn't he? He's doing well. He's probably struggling at that way with it is, but. He's a world class fighter, isn't he? He's not getting pay per view fights, is he? Callum Smith. And you can understand them pushing, going around looking for a better deal for him. But they have delivered for him, haven't they? But it went Sourlands that delivered for him, not Eddie Hearn. So let's have it right. It went Sourlands that put the hard mileage in. The Sourlands. But, you know, it, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth seeing things like this. It really, it really, really does. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And you've got all these people, these company men on Sky, pushing agendas and the same people all the time. It's a bit, it's getting too cosy. It's getting like match at day, isn't it? 
where they're all pulling for the mates and that and it's like an old boys club isn't it football i've got friends in football industry dennis owns matlock town football club and we know people in football industry football don't do for me but it's all clickety click in it like when allardyce leaves one club and goes to his eighth club he takes a team of people and when they don't when they when they don't do a job they all get paid off then they go to another club it's like a merry-go-round isn't it stuart pierce god of southgate Harry Redknapp, all the rest of them, Sam Allardyce, and boxing's getting like that now. Oh, he's not funny on Twitter, oh, he, 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 he ain't got no profile. Well, get Callum Smith a profile, get him one. He needs to just start doing a few more interviews though, doesn't he, but just gets me riled up. This KSI thing's done me head in. It's really, really done me head in. Do you know what I mean? And what's happening with Kel Brook? What's happening with Kel Brook? What, where, where's Kel Brook going now? What, what's happening with Kel Brook? You know, career ruined, isn't it, really? He could have been our Terry Norris, him. He could have ruled, mate, I'm telling you. He could have ruled Kel Brook. Do you know what I mean? Connor Ben. He's got an high ranking. Do you see him fighting David Evanesian? Do I hear? Can get iced? They're going to protect him from that, aren't they? But yet they'll throw Dave Allen in. To these hard fights, won't they? But they'll not throw Conor Ben in an hard fight, will they? Yeah, Dave Allen, he can fight. Uh, he can fight Ortiz and Dylan White and Yoka. Yeah, throw him with all them. But yeah, he's not gonna. But they're not gonna put Conor Ben in with David Evanishian, are they? Do you know what I mean? So th this is how I look at it. I just think it's all one-sided. But it is what it is, isn't it? But, what can you do? What can you do, but, I think that's about it, really. Uh, good positive meeting with Mick Whale. He's going really good. I'm really impressed with how Josh Whale looks at the moment. He's looking, he's looking fantastic. He's looking fantastic. So, alright, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Keep supporting things that we do it's all looking good uh, I'm really happy where that channel's going I'm really really happy and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to the show in the next couple of weeks Tyrone Nurse Josh Whale Tommy Frank Three Musketeers it's all looking good uh, it's all looking good but that fighter that's on box wreck for Josh Whale I don't know what that is, because that fight ain't happening, so the fight on, that's not happening, I don't know how that's got on, it's uh, no two with me, but Josh is not fighting him, nope. But other than that, we're all happy, and uh, alright, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing.